Hello, everybody. Let's do this. Welcome. I'm Lee Camp. I'm joined by the always amazing Eleanor Goldfield, who's hiding in the shadows. Let me back up so you're not in shadow. Not, no, that might, Say, that's just, is, a, oh. That's okay. Uh, hello, everybody. And <laughs> she is, she's a little agoraphobic. So uh, welcome to the show. We have a lot for you. As always, uh, we're going to talk about more about World Central Kitchen, more about Biden suddenly uh, suddenly deciding he needed to do something because uh, something has changed. We'll talk about what. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about so much of that. We'll be getting into uh, what else is there? Oh, yeah, the congressional maps that have ch that uh, in, in terms of voting, in terms of elections that are completely discriminatory, which is, you know, it's, it's on brand. Discriminatory. But, d d d well, I like to add a, a wick, a wick, a wick, a discriminatory. I like it. See, I can do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm not white. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's on brand for the United States to have discriminatory maps uh, for, for elections. But don't you think? Oh, was that a question? Just, just go, yeah. Just say, yeah, like hype person. Yeah. I'm just here as your hype person. No, right in that moment for one second. And when you're talking, well, I'll you be your hype person. It like a we'll question. be mutual hype you gotta people. phrase it like a question. Anyway. Hello, everybody. Please click thumbs up. Please click share. But so let's get to this first is how within this is a great. Uh, great so the United States, sorry, I'm trying to think of what to say first. Uh, the United States is now forcing Israel to open one of the gates to allow in aid, which has been blocked, essentially almost entirely blocked for months now as people starve in Gaza in day 180. Because Biden cares. Because okay. suddenly, suddenly he cares. So this is uh, Kenneth Roth from Human Rights Watch wrote, within hours of Biden threatening to suspend U.S. military aid to Israel, Netanyahu agrees to open a major crossing for humanitarian aid into Gaza where starvation is widespread. Biden always had this leverage, but wouldn't use it. So this is like, he, they're opening this, this, and this is something you and I have said, and so many others have said from, you know, day one, is that Biden had this ability. As much as we see the spokespeople get, U.S. spokespeople get up there and go, we are, we're just, it's upsetting, and we're going to, this is not right. Reagan Th did this too. It, like, every president has had this ability. Well, not like you know, Adams, because Israel didn't exist. But like every president since Israel has existed has had the ability to pick up a phone and go stop it and has not. And has not. And so, yes, this is a tiny little Band-Aid opening one gate for aid to, to allow some aid in. Uh, but it just goes to show that if Biden and the U.S. government, the U.S. empire, Say we will with, withhold military aid. We withhold the missiles, the F thirty fives. Apparently, that we send that every thirty six every thirty six hours. If if they say they'll stop that, they get whatever they want. And so right now, Netanyahu is opening this gate because Biden said that. Now, why did he say that now and not over this past six months, hundred and eighty? What is it? Two days now? Well, it's because of this World Central Kitchen attack which was on white people. It was on white people. It was on aid workers. Uh, it was on American citizen, Canadian, to two or three British citizens. And oh, Australian. it was a military veteran too, lest we forget. Military. Also, the two Brits were apparently uh, former military or possibly military intelligence in Britain. And uh, some people looking, in, looking more into the conspiratorial angles are saying, why is uh, former military and with an aid kitchen in Gaza um, but, you know, and I'll go off what Ali Abu Dima said at Electronic Intifada, that that's not really the story because apparently it is. They were with the security for this kitchen, for this aid organization. And that is not that unusual to have former military as your uh, security in a war zone. Uh, so, but there are more details about this world central kitchen that keep coming out. And I just want to take a moment to go over some of these because they are pretty, <clears throat> pretty shocking. And so, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but I was wondering, I think a lot of people were, why is this World Central Kitchen, which is created by celebrity chef, what's his name, Jose Andres or something? I don't know him. Anyway, uh, why is it allowed in to Gaza? Why is it allowed 
while UNRWA is getting bombed and shut out and defunded and all these things. And UNRWA is far bigger, about a thousand times bigger than this World Central Kitchen. Uh, and yet World Central Kitchen was not only allowed to get in and start feeding people, they were apparently, oh, that's not right, they were apparently delivering uh, 100,000 meals a day, which is not nearly enough. That's a drop in the bucket for 2.3 million people. But they were even allowed to bring in a boat of aid, which who else has been allowed to do that? And so apparently the answer seems to be that Israel, the reason Israel has been working with them, they're close with the U.S. government, is because Israel wants to destroy UNRWA, which is, again, a billion-dollar organization. I had the former spokesperson on yesterday. He said it's like a government in the Middle East. It is that large, 700 schools. Uh, anyway, Israel wants to destroy them. And so World Central Kitchen served as kind of theatrics of like, look, we're replacing UNRWA. Now, that doesn't mean the World Central Kitchen people are not trying to do good. I think that it was made up of people trying to feed starving people. So I am not impugning them. I'm just saying I think that Israel's connection to them was very cynical. Hmm. And then the question you asked just before we got started is I'm sure what everyone's wondering, which is why would they bomb World Central Kitchen? if they're allied with World Central Kitchen, uh, there are several possibilities here. One is that is that there's a breakdown of the command structure with the IDF, where the top of the IDF says, do something. And I've brought this story several times about the breakdown in that command structure. The top of the IDF says, don't, you know, don't shoot at this or don't do that. But you've got lower level people that have basically been told to kill anything that moves in Gaza. So they push the yes button on a drone attack on these cars. And that's kind of the end of the story. They don't like they don't think that there's anyone off limits really in Gaza. Uh, so it could have been breakdown of command structure. It also could just be that uh, the IDF. Guess what? It, it, because they're killing just about everybody, they do make mistakes on the twelve people they're not supposed to kill. <laughs> so it could have been a mistake where they legit thought, you know, that that car is probably Hamas. And, and they think that, I mean, there isn't any accountability and they're just murdering everybody. So why would they really worry? Well, lest we forget, they're murdering their own hostages. Yeah. Like not their hostages, but the hostages that are Israeli, like who came out waving, what was it, like a, a white towel or something? Yeah, a white flag, like, yeah, saying don't shoot us. They right. Were released. Yeah. They've murdered those people. So it really shouldn't come as a shock that they're murdering aid workers when they're murdering their own people that is like that they're using as a front for why they're doing this like oh because we want the hostages back but also we're going to snipe them so like yeah so it really shouldn't come as a shock yeah so <clears throat> both those things like all those things can be true they seem kind of mutually exclusive but all those things can be true the aid workers in world central kitchen i think genuinely want to feed people i don't think they're there just on a laugh, you know, like it's a war zone, horrific war zone, and they're there. I think they're trying to do good, but I also think Israel and maybe the United States as well are cynically using World Central Kitchen to basically try and destroy UNRWA, which is about a thousand times bigger than World Central Kitchen. And uh, anyway, this is the final, the moment that Biden decided to use some of that leverage to finally do something. <laughs> So well, and like something, you yeah, know, like something what, small. Yeah. What, what is that something really? Yeah, just to open that one gate for who knows how long. Um, okay, so I wanted to bring that story, but I also wanted to bring to you, um, basically, the U.S. <laughs> has lost to Yemen. We have been defeated again. The U.S. By the, way. the U.S. government has been defeated by Yemen because we also lost when we were doing the proxy war. Of the via Saudi Arabia. So this will be the second time. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so as most of you know, the Houthis in Yemen were attacking ships that were connected to Israel or headed to Israel, basically to make it a little bit more expensive to commit genocide. And this has made it difficult for the United States and Israel economically to get their ships through that incredibly important, uh, important area. And it's been, you know, it's like, what, is, what does the U.S. do? They can't stop it, really. So if they want to get their ships through, they got to do something. They they either got to destroy all of Yemen, which is not easy uh, and, and would be horrific, or they have to 
basically give up. So Edward Snowden tweeted out, it took just three months for the U.S. Navy and its multinational coalition to somehow lose a war against Yemen. And here's from Bloomberg. The U.S. said it would consider revoking its recent designation of Yemen's Houthis as terrorists if the, and they always throw an Iran back, if the militants <laughs> cease their shipping attacks in and around the Red Sea. So basically the U.S. is backing down. Where is, I had it up here somewhere, but anyway, I think I lost it. U.S., what? No, <laughs> scroll down. U.S. may revoke. There. There, there it is. U.S. may revoke Houthi terrorist label if they stop Red She Red She ship attack. Red she that was the Sean Connery. Sean Connery. <laughs> that was the Sean Connery version. The Red She ship attack. The, the Red She ship attack. A will must be stopped. <laughs> um, Washington seeking diplomatic off ramps. That's basically like you got your ass kicked. Yeah. Says Yemen envoy. Houthis have been attacking ships in the Red Sea since November. And uh, I, I probably should just uh, just comment in here that uh, I, I support the, the Houthis uh, standing up against genocide. I, I would prefer they took a curse upon all Jewish people out of their slogan. That would be awesome if you could do that. But this is just yet another example <laughs> of how Israel ruins things for all Jews and pushes a legitimate rise or, or pushes a rise in legitimate anti-Semitism. So, yeah. Anybody, people, anybody who's like worried about actual anti-Jewish feeling should hate Israel because they're the driving force behind that. Absolutely. And uh, it makes people think that all of what you're saying is it makes people think that all Jews are Israel. And yep. that is not true. Um, but to get to a kind of a deeper layer of this, this shows the waning power of the U.S. empire. I mean, the U.S. empire is absolutely losing hegemony, which is a good thing, unless the U.S. decides to respond to it by just murdering uh, an insane number of people, which is what Israel is doing. And, but th this in general is good news. The U.S. can no longer just dictate to every country in the world exactly how they want things to be. And the U.S. has proven how do they want things to be? Well, just, just put a sociopath at the helm of the ship and see how he wants things to go. Because that's what it is. Well, and also, like, I, I feel like this also speaks to the waning um, the waning paradigm the, or the paradigm shift of Israel just being the victim because or like Israel's right to self-defense, which is like legally and logistically bullshit. But um, it, it, it like because if this were happening in, you know, 1970, then I feel like the world much like it did with uh, in 1968, would f come in line behind Israel in such a way that like you, the U.S. might have enough to just outright attack Yemen uh, w once again, I should say. Uh, but now that like there's so much shift towards, at the very least, like not seeing Israel as the victim and especially towards realizing that they are the perpetrators of violence, I feel like the U.S. realizes, okay, well, if we started an all-out war with Yemen over this, like, people are not going to have our backs, especially when you compound that with the U.S. history in the Middle East, which is, I want to say, checkered? <laughs> um, okay, before, so we might end up uh, coming back to Israel later, Israel special genocide operation, because there's just always so many updates on that, but we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, how much time we end up having. I But before we leave that topic for the moment, I just wanted to throw in here that yesterday I had on Chris Gunnis, the former spokesperson for UNRWA. Uh, he was amazing. And he mentioned that people are asking to help and how can they help? And he said donating to UNRWA doesn't really change much because UNRWA is a billion dollar organization that needs hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's what the U.S. is taking away. Right. So five bucks. Is not so five bucks is not going to make a huge difference. He did, however, mention other on the ground organizations that are trying to feed children in Palestine, in Gaza. And he apparently, while the one he mentioned seems great, he apparently mentioned the wrong organization. And so he wanted me to let you guys know about this one. So I just wanted to do that real quick. It's called Hope and Play. And I think this organization and the other one he mentioned were about 
helping Palestinian kids have the ability to actually play and be children. And now they seem to have shifted the organization almost fully to feeding kids, feeding orphans, because that is the, 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 the main goal right now is just get them fed. So this organization looks pretty cool. And he wanted me to tell you guys that hope and play dot org, not dot com. So hope and play dot org. Okay. Just wanted to throw that in there. Um, cool. We're talking about EPA real quick and, uh, and EPA? East Palestine. Sure. Uh, cause I have that update. I wanted to bring to them that, that, uh, you have not spoken to me of, of this like prior that you wanted to cover this. So when you just say the EPA, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but now you do. But you said, I'm just letting you know that in the future, if you're just like, Hey, you want to do the thing that I haven't talked to you about? Sure. Well, talk to the producers, mm -hmm. talk to but listen, bring it to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just bring it to the producers. Um, okay. So, well, well, let's do that one in a minute. What, what, what do you want to do next? I, hey, you're driving the bus. I'm just a passenger. <laughs> okay, so most of you guys know that East Palestine was uh, Palestine. Palestine, sorry. Palestine. 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 You say Palestine, I say Palestine. Well, let's call the whole thing off. Uh, East Palestine, uh, Ohio was where that massive uh, train derailment and they burned off all that toxic fluid. It happened a couple of years ago, but no. they- No, February of last year. No. Yes. I know your sense of time is warped, but like for reals. Is that when it February was? February 3rd, 2023. Look it up. Hey, let me Google 20, that for you. 2022 maybe? Nope. Okay. Still just all right. 2023. All right. All right. One year ago. Anyway. Totally horrific. People are horribly harmed and they continue to be harmed. Well, this just came out uh, yesterday and I saw it by uh, Savage Joy Marie. I, I would definitely want to give her credit because she has stayed on this topic. She has gone to East Palestine multiple times uh, and she has done great in that regard. So thanks to a FOIA request, they have found the internal emails from the EPA. This is internal at the EPA. So this is not meant for the public to know. And I had mentioned, actually, Savage Joy told me in an interview once that I was the first she ever heard of this, about the EPA's ability to declare a state of emergency for an entire city and get them all universal health care. They have that ability. They have that authority. And I had, I can't remember where I found out about it, but I had brought it up. And she then has been touting it a lot as something that should be done for East Palestine. Uh, the EPA could say all of that town gets free health care and they could do it tomorrow. And instead of watching these people suffer and struggle and die, uh, they could do that. And it's only been done once. One city has, inf has universal health care in America. It's called Libby, Montana, and they get health care forever. Oh, is that because of the it's like an underground asbestos. fire? No, I think. No, no. The underground fire. Oh, that's crazy. No, uh, this is asbestos mining, I think. Yeah. <laughs> there is everybody if you want a good time look up uh this town in pennsylvania where there's an underground fire that's been burning for the since the 1960s <laughs> like literally and the whole town's been emptied out so it's a ghost town now because you can't live on top of a fire and it's been but burning the portal to hell is still there it's been burning underground for oh, yeah. since the 60s okay uh so, so I, they don't have health care because no one's there yeah they, they made them all leave yeah okay I think there are three people left and one of them's the mayor. That's awesome. <laughs> Dude. I live their city council meetings must be like off the hook. The article I read about it, uh, the guy, the reporter was walking through the town. He saw a guy, one guy sitting on a stoop. It's the only guy he saw. And he goes, Hey, we're looking for the mayor. And he goes, I'm the mayor. Oh, uh, God bless you. <laughs> sounds dystopian to me. Really does it? I think it sounds delightful. Okay, so here's my post about this, and here is the actual uh, email uh, internally at the EPA. And someone brought up East Palace. Uh, someone brought up Libby, Montana, and they said, I "Agree with you, Je Jeff. The issue of declaring a public health emergency is a difficult one. We have the authority, but have only used it once in Libby, Montana. Best not to get into this." So this is, so if you look at the date, that's February 20th. That is 17 days after the derailment. Best not to get into this. I also, like, whoever this person is, I want them to get anal cancer. Because, like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Best not to get into this? We've only done it once? Oh, so you mean, like, there's precedent? 
to do this the thing there's precedence yeah but then you're like best not to get into it because i'd rather just see a bunch of eight-year-olds with like rashes respiratory problems and nosebleeds like that's way better yeah and literally this and there's a follow-up email that i don't have here where someone else says i think we can consider this matter done you know pending your approval or whatever like Basically, basically, this is the extent of the conversation. Should we give all of these people who've had their lives destroyed healthcare? Nah. Well, and I, I actually spoke to two people from East Palestine yesterday, uh, and they were telling me that, and this is going to air on Project Censored in a couple of weeks, but, and they were telling me that the EPA, they've contacted the EPA, they've, they've bugged them, they've begged them to come out and take samples, air samples, water samples, um, soil samples and the EPA won't do it. The EPA is stonewalling them. The EPA won't even like, they won't even like test or clean up. So like they said, like by where the train derailed, uh, in the creeks, like you could, there's still a sheen on the water. Like the EPA won't even do the menial job of like, like a cleanup. So the level that like to which the EPA has just totally backed away from this is remarkable and totally horrific. And so I like, I'm not surprised to hear about this. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, here are the articles about it and some of the imagery. I mean, look at that train. It was 38 it was cars that derailed and all of them were carrying hazardous materials which they then decided to burn because that's a solid idea. Yeah. So apparently the burning is what actually caused a lot of the problem. It was putting all of it into the air. So the entire area was just like infected and people to this day, reporters uh, like Joy Marie will go there and get nosebleeds in a matter of days. They'll go there for a few days. And Well, and just like the, the, the you know, the, the, the folks that I spoke to, um, the man says that he had to he had to stop working because he now has a heart condition and he has to take a shit ton of meds. And it's like people and, and, and then he, and he brought this up and I'm so glad that he did because I I hate this like line of neoliberal uh, like this talking point. Well, why don't you just leave? It's like he's like, I was making eighty thousand dollars a year and now I make zero. Guess how that's affected my family and guess if I have money to move. And where am I going to go? Because I can't work. So it's like Moving this so idea expensive. of just like, hey, why don't you just fucking leave? It's like, hey, yeah. that sounds great. Are you going to pay for it? It's like yeah. these people aren't staying out of some kind of like, uh, out, out of like a- For fun. Or yeah. Like. Or because they're like, no, I refuse to leave my home plate. It's like they're they're stuck. They're literally stuck in a toxic waste dump. And they can't get out and neither the government nor Norfolk Southern, the rail company, are doing a shit, a, like, a, like a modicum of anything to deal with it or, or take any accountability. So it's like, this is, uh, yeah, this is the U.S. Yeah, and, and the deeper level of this is that it shows that our elected officials, our government in general, does not give a flying shit about average people, about people out there that are struggling, even when these massive corporations have some sort of quote-unquote accident, which we could also spend a half hour talking about how they knew this was coming. Uh, they don't They don't even fix that. And the amount of money we're talking to give these people universal health care and everything else they need is nothing to our government. It is nothing compared to the military budget. It is nothing. And our- It's literally like less than a weapons shipment to Israel. Yeah. Like, like a legit. one, like one, like one, one. weapon. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. One, like if you just took out one every 36 hours, that would, that would cover it. Yeah. And it, it, it shows how much of an inverted totalitarian system we live in which these corporations can just do whatever they want, kill or harm whoever they want. And the U.S. government won't even try to make it right. Uh, and then about how you could have known this type of accident was coming. I mean, these bomb trains explode all the time. But uh, this is the, the union, the rail, the rail workers union uh, called it a, an 18th century accident because these type of trains and the the uh, technology on them, they're not even used anymore, except in like, you know, 
third world countries, if we still use that term. But And these trains are still going through East Palestine. They're still going through all of these towns. And the, I mean, the, the same problems that created this derailment still exist. So you're not only are you not addressing this disaster, this catastrophe, but you're not addressing what caused it. So it's like it will happen again. So, yeah, there you go, folks. There's the update on what we finally found out about internally at the EPA. They know they have the ability to give all these people health care. They could just with a flick of a pen, it would happen. Emergency, uh, declared emergency, give them all health care. We have the authority. We've done it in Libby, Montana. Let's not get into this. Let's not worry about it. Does Libby, Montana still have? I think it's forever. Oh. As far as I know. Okay. Which story would you like to go to next? This one? So this story is interesting mostly because I'm going to shit on... I'm going to shit on the concept of voting. But I want to cover this because... Excuse me, language, the idea of voting. Okay. Sorry. Um, the paradigm? Sh shit on the idea of voting. Yes. Uh, so this is... And, and I'm not shitting on, like, ProPublica. They do actually really great work. And you guys should... Uh, you all should check it out. By the way, everyone hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. We're getting close to 70,000 on YouTube. Woo! Uh, Okay. In the chat, somebody just wrote, the whale way should be nationalized. <laughs> First of all, I see you. Uh, and secondly, I agree. I, see you. I agree. Um, For those who don't know, inside joke, Eleanor loves the phrase whale world workers. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even, I'm not going to say it. It's a stupid, there are too many R's. And then you add a W, it's like, fuck, yeah, that's not fair. Rail workers, just you just I've get started out of the road. Here's the problem: I've started saying rail workers, but sometimes I still trip up on it <laughs> because, like, I I have such an overly analytical brain. Is like I start I like I get like anxiety about knowing that I'm gonna say it, so I'll still <laughs> mess it All up. Right, we got a we got a super chat. WCK World Central Kitchen driver killed was Palestinian. If all seven were Palestinian, genocide Joe would have snored on it. Yeah, totally, totally, totally agree. Okay, um, so this this report is basically that uh, the districts that how they're drawn, how they're gerrymandered, um, which, as you pointed out, once actually has a connection to salamanders, which is <laughs> which is hilarious and feels very on brand with like how ridiculous our oh, oh where the is. name jerry yeah. mander came from there was a guy named jerry who came up with a district map that looked like a salamander because it was so insane and so he was like the first to do it and so they called it gerrymandering so legit like your inability to cast a democratic vote is because of some dude named jam jerry and a salamander <laughs> i like you could not make this shit up our history is so fucked okay um, so this is particularly discriminatory in the South, <laughs> who could have guessed that, with regards to white and black districts, right? Um, All right, Sherry. And, uh, and, and so basically what this report is saying is that these ridiculous gerrymandered districts are going to remain in place, um, because they don't want to rock the boat ahead of the election and they that would be our genocidal war crime boat yes okay and they 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 call it the purcell principle which is based on a 2006 court case from arizona that found that voters may be confused by late changes in polling places or election procedures we, we want to keep our discrimination so that voters aren't confused by a lack of discrimination right, right. we're like wait why am i not being abused and discriminated against right and also, first of all, the infantilization of like, well, because everyone's an idiot, so they're not going to understand. And it's like, but the way that you may, like the way that you've set up voting in and of itself is confusing. So it's like to suggest that if you change it to make it more, I don't know, democratic would make it confusing. This is kind of like keeping slavery because it would be so confusing to everyone. Yeah. And there's It'd like be... a lot of bureaucracy involved. Yeah. So like, let's. I mean, you know what, just, what, what? What did that thing like? Let's just not get into it. Let's not get into let's it. Not get into let's. It. 
Um, so here's the point that like, here's a point that I wanted to make. So as, as ProPublica points out, um, the cases illustrate, cause there's a lot of legal cases in places like, uh, Mississippi and Florida, who knew, um, Utah, uh, like, so several States are dealing with this issue and they say that the cases illustrate how difficult it is to reverse gerrymandered voting maps. Even when lower courts find election maps illegal and give state legislatures months to make corrections, appeals, and other delaying tactics can run out the clock as elections near. You know what this reminds me of is like, it, once a system is corrupt, the corrupt people in the system aren't going to undo their own corruption. Mm -hmm. It's like, the mob isn't going to step in and be like, maybe we should stop being so, so mob-esque. You know, we're being a little too mobby. Right. Like, you can't expect the corrupt to undo the thing that put them there. Well, and I just like I say this to also point out that like on a very basic level, on a very local level, we don't have democracy. Just the fact that like we live in districts that are written based on a salamander. It's like I it, like our, our access to democracy on the on the smallest local level is greatly restricted and wholly dependent on what feels like to me, like very much like how they drew lines of the original States, you know, like, I don't know, just put it here. That it makes no sense based on who lives there. It makes no sense based on like, uh, you know, like the, the, the ecosystems. It's like, I don't care. It's a very colonialist, um, imperialist, white supremacist way of looking at the world. It's like the, uh, it's like the Berlin Conference, right? In that, that, that drew uh, that drew African countries with no African people just, there. Just took a map of Africa, and they were like, "Let's just chop this it up is yours, like this." And that's mine. Your country, and... your country, your country, and all given to white people, and without any consulting of the people or the environment that were actually on the ground. And the other point that I wanted to make is like you would need to cons you would need to have a very streamlined way of doing this so as to not make it racist which is basically impossible because the whole system is racist but my point is this that neighborhoods change a lot and districts change a lot so for instance when i first moved to los angeles there weren't a lot of white folks in downtown now it's like all white folks and people drawing fucking swans and lattes and shit but and so that's like over the course of 20 years <laughs> drawing swans and lattes <laughs> You're saying in the uh, in the in the, in the live, people living under the bridge weren't painting the swans in the latte. I like wasn't a lot of like the foam. Seriously, I made a guy in suspenders very angry once by saying that I didn't need him to draw me a goddamn like <laughs> woodland creature in the milk of my latte. You realize in this ridiculous <laughs> capitalist system, those suspenders and that swan were the only passion in his life. Look, I'm it was sorry. All, I was just late it was for work. all that was and keeping him going. I didn't need and a you swan. came in and you said, I don't want the swan. And he saw his whole existence drain out of his body. Can you think about that? I, I, I didn't at the time, but now that you. <laughs> uh so and, and same thing like where where uh where I used to live in DC, Adams Morgan was at one point predominantly black area now it's predominantly white so it's like in order to actually address the continued systemic racism vis-a-vis -vis gentrification for instance you'd have to redraw these maps like all the damn time for it to make sense and for it to be even like again like even have a modicum of justice but you're not gonna do that because the whole system is based on injustice and the whole system is, of voting is bullshit and I'm sorry, like I, that I, this is kind of like a, it seems like a bit of a turn here because I'm using this. It seems like a bit of a turd, honestly. But, well, yeah, but my point, like when I was reading this article, I was like, yeah, the larger story here is like, we don't have any kind of democracy, even on a lower level. Like you think, oh, in a local election, I'm making a difference. And it's like, okay, maybe in some places you are. On the whole, no, because you still don't have a say in how these these ridiculous and totally arbitrary lines are drawn. So all that to say, voting is no more powerful than they want it to be. And they don't want it to be powerful because they're the keepers of the pens that draw the lines. Well, and as you've often said, and and 
Well, or maybe maybe it was someone else said it's like turning your blinker on while you're driving and then you switched it to it's like wiping your ass. No, I said the blinker. I've just I have both. I have both. You came up with both. Okay. Yeah. Well, I started with the blinker, but then I was like, maybe it should be something a little bit more personal. (laughs) I feel like wiping your ass is more important, though, honestly. (laughs) So. The blinker might be uh, the better analogy, but the funnier one's the wiping ass. Anyway, it's like turning on your blinker while you're driving because, yeah, do it. It's, you're less likely to get in an accident. But if you think that you're changing the world, like if you look at the genocide Israel's committing and you're going, I'm going to turn on my blinker when I drive and all will be right in the world, then you have misunderstood the power of blinkers. <laughs> so, Touche. Touche, <laughs> you quoting me. I gave you credit. There's royalties in the mail. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. All right. Let's move on to uh, to just 57 companies destroying our future. Um, we have several stories more coming. In a few minutes, we'll be heading over to justrumble.com slash Lee Camp as well as my locals page. But we'll stay on all the platforms for a little while longer. Uh, we're getting really close to 70,000 subscribers on youtube.com slash moment of clarity. Uh, which my sure if you just search for my name, you'll probably find it. Uh, I'd love if you're watching there or you're not watching there, I'd love for you to click subscribe. It's free. Click the bell icon and get us over 70,000. That would help. Your super chats always help. Becoming a member at Locals is the best way to help. And thank you guys for keeping this show going. Uh, We are incredibly suppressed. uh, And so it, it comes down to you guys. It comes down to whether you're willing to let people know and to show up. And I always tell people to just show up four days a week because you're not going to get the alerts usually. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm here. Eleanor joins me almost every Friday. So if you only like the joint show, then Friday is the day for you. <laughs> no one here just likes the Friday. Hey, Displaced55 <laughs> uh, did a super chat over on Rumble. Said, gotta love salamanders, but that guy, Jerry, not so much. I know. It's like, it's also twisted. You're like, you're taking a pretty cool animal like a salamander and just giving it the worst reputation. I mean, because, we, we've, because we've, done that. we've done that for a lot of things. Like the donkey got ruined by being the Democratic Party. The, the elephant. elephant got ruined with the GOP. Also, I think the donkey just being called an ass. But like it was ruined. Well, that's the, well, the, and so I looked up the basis of it. Like, why did they ever want to be the donkey? They didn't really want to be a political cartoonist first represented the Democratic Party as a donkey in like the 1880s or something because he was saying they were stubborn asses or something. And then it just and they decided to make the insult their like crown. May, maybe or or it just started to catch on. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, the Democrats were like, I guess we're the donkeys. So I, don't know. I mean, they are asses. Um the more egregious one is the elephant because elephants are really cool and they're really smart. Mm -hmm. Way smarter than 80% of Republicans. Anyway. So this is actually kind of like an update. The like several years ago, there was a basically like a hundred companies are responsible for 75% of global emissions. And I remember uh, covering that at the time and, and being outraged that a hundred companies were writing the death warrant for our future, for our kids, our grandkids, all those things. But Lee, our pets, we have whittled that number down. Isn't that isn't that nice? Gravity of capitalism. Can you feel it? Yeah. So now it's just fifty-seven companies linked to eighty percent of greenhouse gas emissions since twenty sixteen. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven companies, like. I think we like that, that, that guillotine would remain sharp. Like you wouldn't even have to dude, use it. No, much. like it would not be blunt. It, it blunted at all. Yeah. Like literally uh, there are more matchbox cars in my home than there are companies linked to 80% of greenhouse gas emissions. There's no kid involved. She just likes matchbox cars. I just really cars, like but... matchbox cars. So, um, <clears throat> so these me, are, should I read the first paragraph here? I'm going to read the first okay. paragraph. Okay. <laughs> you do it then. This is my story. <laughs> Poaching my damn story. Okay. Yeah. A mere 57 oil, gas, coal, and cement producers are directly linked to 80% of the world's global fossil CO2 emissions since the 2016 totally useless uh, Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, so this powerful cohort of, wait, state-controlled corporations and shareholder-owned multinationals. And... 
maybe I'll, I'll let you finish first, but that, that speaks to a sport, an important uh, analysis of economics, but go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, that, so some people may go, well, this shows it's not just the capitalist nations, right? Or the more capitalist nations. It's not just, it's all, it's not just the U S it's also Russia and China and all these places. And, and of course, some people may very well point out that a lot of these places are, have, are, you know, Russia's capitalist, uh, China is, uh, has a lot of capitalism in their system. But here's the thing is it actually doesn't have to do, I mean, aspects of it do, but it doesn't fully have to do with just capitalism. It has to do with market economics. You could have socialism, have a state enterprise where the, where the profits go to the people. Uh, like if Venezuela, no you know, sold their oil and gave all the profits to the people. And they were beautiful, right? Thank goodness it's not owned by a tiny number of oligarchs. It could be exactly the same, where you still are destroying the planet by extracting all this stuff. So it's market economics. It's not just capitalism. Well, and Norway gives a good portion of the proceeds from its oil drilling to the people. So And to some fish. Well, the fish are dead because of the oil drilling. So then they, the the next in line on the on the will uh, after the fish are the are the people. Okay. So that it comes back to the people. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, well, yeah. So that's much to the point. Yeah. Right. So so like this is, I I mean, and and this is not even taking into consideration the U.S. military, um, and and the like how m remarkably dirty and pollutive war is like this is just these are just like gas and coal and oil and cement producers and just to be just to be clear like this th these um <coughs> this branches out into other aspects like plastic sorry <laughs> i think i swallowed my own hair i would keep going but i wasn't sure where where what it's plastic. okay i got it uh, yeah okay <clears throat> so <clears throat> Basically, like the plastics industry is the oil industry, right? And so when we talk about plastics made from oil, yeah. So uh, when we, we talk take about two oils and you put them together and you get plastic, I'm very smart. <laughs> when one oil loves another oil, yeah. Uh, so basically, like, so the the the, the biggest investor-owned contributor to emissions was Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil has its hands in like so much shit, a lot of plastic though. And this is a lot like a lot of the most pollutive industries in places like um Cancer Alley. Uh there are also places in Pennsylvania that like just spew the most toxic shit. These are plastics industries. And so understanding like how these things are connected is super important and again understanding that like these places, these corporations, they have CEOs. They have, you know, there are heads of these companies. They have names and addresses. I'm not saying anything more than that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I'm no, not just saying. I, yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, and actually, did I, maybe I brought the story here uh, that the one of the Elbit Systems locations. Um, oh, shut down. Shut down in yeah. Britain because of protests. Protesters made it difficult enough for them to operate that they actually did shut down which is, uh, you know, awesome, awesome moment. Oh, yeah. And uh, someone just uh, mentioned that corporate charges can be revoked because, maybe, let's sit down with Auntie Eleanor for a little history lesson. Back in the day, corporations only existed. She means 1986. <laughs> uh, back in the day, corporations only existed via a charter. Uh, that demanded that the corporation do some kind of public good, like build a bridge or whatever. And so those charters were and could be revoked if the corporation didn't do its job, as in like a public good. Obviously, that's no longer the case. But the idea remains the same, that you could revoke public charters, or you, or you could revoke corporate charters yeah. on these grounds. There's like, there's plenty of precedent. So if we didn't have a system that was owned by corporate America, you actually could have your representatives break up companies, demand they yeah. do things, demand they change, demand they just completely wipe them out. All If you had legit government all of that could happen it would happen to companies that had done wrong like what's the name of the company that crashed in east palestine norfolk southern norfolk southern you could do it to norfolk southern but we don't have that we have a government that is that only answers to corporate america 
which didn't some say that's the definition of fascism. Mussolini Part said that the, he's a pasta, right? The classic definition of fascism is a basically like a right wing uh, <clears throat> collaboration between corporate the corporate sector and the government in order to basically control a population and um that's what we have here uh okay so we've got more on this story as well as an amazing clip of the what president story? of guiana oh. um don't worry about it. a president <laughs> of guiana destroying bbc presenter all of that and much more is coming up in just a minute but it's all at rumble.com or my locals page at rumbles.com slash lee camp you can watch for free so if you don't like to pay the 38 cents and become a member then Go to rumble.com slash Lee Camp and keep watching this live stream. If you're on Rumble, nothing changes. Just give me one minute to <laughs> switch changes. the streams. You guys rock. Make sure everybody hit subscribe, hit share, hit thumbs up, leave a comment. All those things help. Even if you're not watching this live, you can still support the show by hitting the thanks button on YouTube uh, or, or Rumble. Just click thanks and throw a donation.